Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, everybody, and thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. As you can see, we've got the man that I consider my favorite baby boomer philosopher, Bill Jordan, with us. Well, thank you so much. What an honor. That's uh, I appreciate it. And I love seeing you guys and hanging with you. Thanks for having me back. You know, we do so enjoy uh, being with our favorite philosopher. Uh, so sometimes when we are talking among ourselves, we say, hey, should we give a call to Jordan? Bill Jordan. <laughs> okay. Now we're talking. Yeah, we're talking. Now we're talking. Uh, we're are we're you... talking James Bond, aren't we? We're talking yeah, James we are. Bond, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I can remember in my in the kitchen in our home, I'm going to say I was... I'm going to say I was like 10 years old and my mom and dad had gone out on a double date the night before. And the next morning was a Sunday morning and I'm in there and my dad's at the sink and he's like, we saw a movie last night. I think you would really like. And, you know, what was it? It was Goldfinger. My dad's telling me about Goldfinger. And we had a neighborhood theater that was probably like three, four blocks from our house. I walked, this is back in the day when kids could go do stuff by themselves, you know, and like be gone all day and nobody knew where they were prior to cell phones or helicopter parents or any of that stuff. So I, I walked up one day, walked up to the theater and saw Goldfinger and, and, you know, I didn't get any of the double entendre stuff. I didn't get any of the wordplay, but I did get that there was a hot car with an ejector seat. And there was a guy with a top hat that could lop people's heads off because it had like razor blades <laughs> in it, you know. And uh, oh man, I just fell in love with the character at that point. And then this is another thing as far as in pop culture. If you guys, and I know you remember this, when movies, when theaters used to show double features. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. they don't do that anymore. So the Goldfinger was the third James Bond movie after Goldfinger really, really exploded. They re-released. Dr. No, which was the first one, and then From Russia With Love was the second one, they re-released as a double feature, Dr. No and From Russia With Love. And I went down to the same theater and I sat through the double feature twice. <laughs> I spent eight hours in the movies watching James Bond. And he has been one of my favorite characters all through my life. Now, Bill, at that early age, were you not aware of the beautiful femme fatale? In well, the movie? you know, I think at that age I was aware of them and I knew I liked them, but I didn't know why I liked them. <laughs> now, now you know why you like them. Now I know why I like them, but you know, there was a little bit of period, uh, there's a little bit of time in there. I want to say maybe even the Daniel Craig movies that I, I hate to say this, but it was like, like the Bond women became sort of forgettable. And maybe because I've seen the early ones so much, I mean, I can just rattle off actresses' names and, and uh, sure. which Bond movie I think had the most good looking women in it. And I don't want to sound shallow or, you know, we're masochistic, not masochistic, but the misogynistic uh, or sexist about this, but. When I have posted on Facebook pictures of, you know, Tom Selleck from Magnum and his shorts are like a foot above his knee and women are just piling on about, oh, my gosh, he's so hot. It's like, OK, men aren't the only shallow beings on this planet. Um, oh, by the way, no, I, for, for all our women in the audience, uh, you're, you're, you two are shallow, according to Bill Jordan. So uh, there's something for everybody today. There's, <laughs> there is absolutely something for everybody. But James Bond... You know, as far as why, you know, it's the most, it is the most, it has been the most viewed movie franchise in history. Yeah. And they, well, they, they look, is it Cubby Broccoli or whoever got the franchise? Never right. stopped making them. Just right. never stopped. Right. You know. And so we've got another one coming up later on this year, No Time to Die with Daniel Craig. And I think that's supposed to be his last one. And now there's all kinds of online rumors about who's going to be next. I mean, I would have to say if I were to rank them, you know, Sean Connery is my favorite Bond. I'll give you Daniel Craig as number two. I think he's really strong with that. I'll go Pierce Brosnan with the next. I like Timothy Dalton. I like George Lazenby in On Her Majesty's Secret Service, his only time as a, as a James Bond. And I just never bought into Roger Moore as James Bond. And I, I saw in an interview or read an article years ago, maybe, because 
Sean Connery played the role seriously, but then would inject humor, you know, a double, you know, a word player, you know, shocking yeah. or he's she's had her kicks or he got the point, something like that. Roger Moore played it like very lightheartedly, but every now and then got serious. And I preferred the serious, believable kind of the spy secret agent thing versus the the Roger Moore take on it. Yeah. And then it became think, cartoonish. It, could, it became cartoonish to me also with some of the stunts and stuff like that. Yeah, I think Roger Moore was still playing the saint when he was doing James there, Bond. That's exactly, I think. Uh, and I love, I love him in the saint. I do love Roger Moore. Uh, but by comparison, you're, you're correct. So what is it about the, the, the character, the James Bond, that everybody seems to love? Obviously, uh, Macho gets all the girls, all of that stuff. I can see the attraction to men. What do women like about James Bond? Why don't women see the James Bond character as misogynistic? I'm probably the wrong uh, gender to ask on that one, but um, I've been looking, this is a, a totally side topic and I'm throwing you a curveball and I apologize. We've all heard of alpha males and beta males, omega males and stuff like that. And I have in the last six months or so stumbled upon a psychological profile of what is called a sigma male, sigma male. And without question, when they give you a pop culture reference for a Sigma male, the first person they mention is James Bond. He operates on his own. He can work with others if he needs to, and he can work and play well with others, play well maybe with some more than others. Um, <laughs> but I, but mainly, mainly he, he's a solo. He's on his own, and he's solving all the problems as a one man only. And I think that's part of what we everybody likes about that i mean have yeah. you guys ever not looked into the mirror and said you know coleman john coleman <laughs> yeah i've actually I, never said that no, i haven't but yeah i haven't said uh, coleman. yes but the guy in the mirror answered back no. <laughs> yeah. Uh -uh. yeah yeah i i think it's that he's the he's the he's the he's the lone wolf guy he's the lone wolf hero yeah that, well, that overcomes you, all you know the what? odds you know, he gets the girl, he overcomes the odds, sure. and he wins the day. And I think that's sure. the uh, that's and, the big and, pull. And strength is a very attractive uh, quality. Right, right. Uh, and not and part of that strength. Part, yeah, strength. part of that sigma male thing is an air of mystery. And mm -hmm. he's got that. You know, okay. he doesn't say too much. He doesn't reveal a whole lot about himself. So. There, there is that. Look into on your own time, and maybe we'll do a, a video about it sometime. The Sigma male, it's kind of intriguing. And I believe I'm not comparing myself with James Bond, but when I look at the, the personality traits of a Sigma male, uh, I think I line up pretty closely with that. Let's, uh, let's uh, people think, find out what it is. Yeah, let's people think that uh, we just spontaneously uh, talk about these topics. Uh, you actually have been doing, uh, using the advantage of being home a lot now. Uh, and you can give a shameless plug to the streaming service. Been binge watching uh, James yeah. Bond now for several, yeah. uh, several, uh, several we, months. We, dropped, uh, we cut the cable maybe a little over a year ago. As we still have cable for high speed internet, but the, we've gone to streaming services. So we use Hulu, and one of the ones we use Hulu is a you pay. I forgot how much it is. It's like it goes up every couple of months. Uh, but we use a free app called Pluto, like what used to be a planet and was the cartoon dog back in the day. Uh, Pluto, and they have a, it's free TV, but you've got to watch commercials. And they've got all kinds of, I mean, they've got like a Beverly Hillbillies channel, a Mission Impossible channel, right? A Johnny Carson channel, whole episodes of Johnny Carson. Love it. But they've got a James Bond channel that they run periodically. They'll take it off and swap it out for something else. But I've been watching all the old James Bonds again, just, you know, talking along with them. They've even got a Spanish James Bond channel, which I watch with the sound off because I've seen all the movies enough to where I can talk along with them anyway. I know what's going on. I, you know, to that, I have to say bueno. Yeah, to bueno. And by the way, in Spanish, the Spanish versions of the James Bonds, uh, Sean Connery in particular, very deep voice, very deep voice, <laughs> very manly man, macho voice. Yes. Um, yeah, I just, I, if a James Bond movie is on other than a Roger Moore movie, I hate to say it, but if a Bond movie is on, I'm watching it. I just am. Yeah. In love with the character and the story. Well, next time next time we get together, maybe we'll talk about the Bond women. 
because oh. that th- that franchise they had everything they had all the toys all the right. gimmicks they had a tough strong tough silent guy and all they the beautiful, beautiful women. women and all they the had beautiful adventure women. and murder and it, it really was uh, the book series originally and then the movies really uh, packed everything in there that anybody could like there's something for everybody well so, and great bed and great bed women. yeah oh, wonderful bad guy if so We'll talk about the women next time. All okay. Right? All right. Okay, good. And we're, we're and in, the, in the meantime, I'm going to embrace my boom. Oh, there you go, guys. Appreciate that. Find out more about the Embrace the Boom movement. It's really my way of hopefully empowering and inspiring and, in, in uh, you know, just uh, in, uh, there's another word I wanted to use, but uh, baby boomers, members of the baby boomer generation is just to live your best life, live your life and forget your age and press on and base, embrace the boom, as we say. So thanks and for watch, having me back again, guys. What? And watch a lot of James Bond yes. while you're at it. Yeah. How can, how can you not? <laughs> <laughs> See you soon, Bill. Thanks for having me. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.